Hey people, what's up? K Hart here. So I've been trying really hard to keep up with all of the requests you guys have been sending me either on here or on my Instagram and I've been getting a lot recently, which is great. Please keep sending me requests of what you want to see because I want to make videos that you guys want to watch, obviously. But a while ago, I got a request to make a classic boom bap kind of like ginseng type beat. And that is what we're going to do today. So let's hop on into Ableton and get started. Okay, so I am going to set my BPM at about 80 for this one today. So let's drag this down. So the most important thing if you want to nail that ginseng vibe is finding the right sample. And listening to an extensive amount of his beats, his samples seem to range anywhere from like classic soul records almost to classic rock with elements like electric guitar in them. I also noticed he liked to pick a lot with flute in it. So I went on the hunt for the perfect sample and I managed to find one that I think fits perfectly. Really nice vibe, got that flute in there. And then if we come a little bit farther, So nice. So this song is faster than the 80 BPM tempo that I want my beat to be at. So that means I just have to warp this. And a lot of times when we're working with live recorded audio, that's not like a set loop from Splice or Loop Cloud, you might have to come in and do some things manually. So the snippet that I grabbed here, I wanna make sure that I'm starting on a, a downbeat here. And by the downbeat, I just mean the one of this measure. So this to me sounds like a downbeat right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start right there. Let's come in here to the actual audio clip. And what I wanna do is we'll hit warp. I'm gonna hit no. And let's change this to complex. And that's actually pretty spot on. Like live does such a good job at just warping these longer samples. So now that it's warped and everything sounds really good, we wanna consolidate this, especially if you're gonna do like what I'm gonna do and put this into a simpler, because otherwise it's going to revert back to the original audio. So I'm gonna hit Control J and that's gonna consolidate that. And consolidating basically means it's going to make permanent any changes you've made to the audio waveform. Okay, so now that we have that consolidated audio, I'm gonna come up here to this empty MIDI track. Let's pop this right on there. It'll put it into a simpler for me. Let's go to slice mode. And instead of transients, which can also be a fun mode to use, we're gonna slice it by beat and quarter notes should be good. And let's come up with a pattern here. Okay, cool. I'm gonna come in here and just quantize this. So control shift U to make sure everything is just where it's supposed to be here. Okay, so I'm gonna put an EQ8 on here. Let's also grab a reverb as well. And this is gonna help it so it's not quite as choppy sounding. Um, you can hear this does have bass in it, which I'm gonna pull out of here. But the first thing I wanna do before I do that is actually pop a spectrum on here. So let's put that right here. And what I wanna do is figure out what key this is in. So let's check out the bass. Usually the bass is a great way to find maybe the root of the scale that it's starting in. So we have right here an F, and then we go up to a G. So usually these highest peaking spikes, I'll call them, are gonna be the most prominent, either your fundamental, which is your actual note, or these other smaller ones are called harmonics. And these can kind of guide you toward what key or scale this is in, or even a mode. Uh, let's see what else we have. We have a D and a C here. So I'm gonna probably guess this is in like maybe F major. So let's just pull this bass out. And it's okay if you can hear just a little bit of it. I just wanna pull out the majority of it. Okay, next I wanna add some drums. So I've set up a simple drum rack here. So I just have a kick, snare, different snare, and a hi-hat. in and actually make these hi-hats because I have the accent turned on on my push 
meaning it wasn't picking up the velocity information. So I'm just going to have these come down like this, and I'm going to use Ableton's handy dandy new deviation. So I'm just going to have it go like that. So each time it comes around, it's going to be a little bit different. Very, very nice for stuff like this to humanize it. It's also super easy to add like little drum fills in Live 12 now with the new generate feature. And that's why I have this extra snare that I didn't use. So I'm actually going to delete maybe like the last two beats of this last bar here. And I'm going to come down to the generate section here and let's change it to seed. Let's select the area we want it to do. So this area here and let's have it generate. It's going to say a little fill here. So let's see what it is. That's a little busy. So let's have it do it again. So let's take the density down maybe so it's not as busy. That's actually pretty cool. But we can just like do this endlessly until we have something that sounds really cool. So we hit generate. Let's see what this one sounds like. Hey, that one I actually really like. So I'm going to go with that one. Okay. And I do have everything in a drum rack just because of that generate feature. Mainly I usually keep everything separate for mixing purposes, but it's easy enough to do this in a drum rack too. You have all your volumes here that you can change and mix that way. You can also send this to a reverb. So I'm going to do that real quick. You can open up your returns here and your sends. So I'm just going to grab Ableton's reverb and drop it right here. Make sure it's at 100% wet because this is the same as a send. So let's just do a low cut and a high cut as well. Turn the decay down since this will be for our drums. Let's just make sure it's working. Yeah, there we go. Just send some of those. And I'm going to share my crunchy boom bap drum secret with you guys it's this color limiter which is basically i think this is a max for live device that you can get for free but if i turn it off obviously it's adding a lot of volume but basically this is a limiter it's a saturator and it's a very colorful saturator at that we have this color option here so if i actually i went through and i made sure that i Checked this with the volume match. So it's actually, this is it with the volume match. It's just adding some nice kind of crunchy top end. Makes the drums really, really punchy. So the next thing I want to do is kind of fill out this melody a little bit. And I want to use Ableton's electric. So it's kind of like their electric piano. So I have this effect chain after it, so we've got roar, but what's really cool about the multiband mode is that I can saturate the low end just a little bit, but this high end really, especially with like an electric piano sound versus you can hear huge difference that makes, it almost makes it sound more like a bell. I'm adding chorus just to widen it a little bit. EQ, echo, just to add a little bit more washiness here. And then the glue compressor just to add a little bit more volume. So let's go ahead and record in a little melody to go with this. Okay, really simple. Let's go ahead and add a bass line. line here basically playing along that F chord and the C chord here and I'm sure someone is going to ask me what uh, bass I'm using here and this is actually the retrograde bass by Teletone Audio um, really really nice sounding bass I just picked this up actually okay, so I thought it'd be cool to add just a little bit something extra to the drums so they're not just high high kick and snare so I'm just grabbing this and uh yeah, y'all know I like my butter knives. I'm just gonna just add a little bit of extra high end and uh, pop that into the drum rack and add it in. OK, 
Okay, four tracks. Is it enough? Is it enough? I think it's enough to start arranging it. Let's go ahead and add, let's start with eight bars. I'm gonna take that original audio. I wanna take the electric guitar part and add that in. Gonna add an audio track. Let's copy this down here. Control and drag just to copy that. So let's make sure. Cool, that sounds good. I'm gonna duplicate that one more time. All right, let's grab an auto filter. I'm gonna put a band pass on here. Maybe at about, let's do 12. Cool. And also let's open that back up, a uh, utility. And I'm just going to automate the volume so it comes in from nothing down here about. We need some sort of transition. So I'm gonna maybe select this last beat here. I'm gonna cut it and then hit R to reverse it. This makes it sound kind of glitchy. And then let's just go ahead and have Ableton generate one more drum fill for us. Boom. Let's copy all of this over one more time and then we'll like cut everything out probably for here. So let's see. So I'm thinking like a little bass fill maybe. Uh, one other thing that Jin Sang really likes to add are little like vocal cuts of somebody saying like, hey, or yo, kind of like this. Hey, yo. So just to make that more interesting, I'm just going to add a delay on it hey, yo. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Just with some ping pong and then a little bit of EQ and this cool little effects that I created. And all I did was I'll show you my master chain here is I put a beat repeat on here and just set it so the pitch decay goes off and I recorded snippets of the audio here. So that's literally just the beat repeat going off. I'll show you my master chain. I just have an EQ here, cutting off all of these highs because basically all of his beats sound like they have a low pass on them. Some glue compression a little bit of multiband compression just to bring out those mids a little bit. And I'm using this rabbit tape, which is a new one from Safari Pedals actually, for a little bit of tape saturation. And if I turn it on and off, you can hear it's just giving it a little bit of grit. Okay, I think it's gonna do it for this one. If you enjoyed or if you learned anything, please remember hit that like button. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you want to see in future videos, and I will try. You know, try to work on it. I'll get to it eventually. I promise. And until then, take care.